All right, cherubs, right now we're looking at Angels and Devils by M.C. Escher. As you can see, this painting takes its name from the white spaces, which are occupied by angels, and the dark spaces, which are occupied by devils. There is no unused space on this circle, and the angels and devils appear to repeat infinitely. One of the bits we found interesting here is how the angels seem to form these nice, almost circular patterns, while the devils form these pointed, aggressive patterns. Anytime the composition matches the meaning, we get excited, so let's figure this out. Escher is clearly playing with geometry here, but not just any geometry, he's using non-Euclidean geometry. To understand what that means, let's start with Euclidean geometry. This is the geometry you learned in grade school. It's a series of axioms, or self-evident truths, like parallel lines will never intersect, and these axioms build on each other to create fun laws that are always true, like the famous Pythagorean theorem. Theorems like that are always true given the truth of the axioms. Euclidean space appears on two-dimensional flat surfaces, but not all two-dimensional surfaces are flat. Take the sphere, for example. The surface is two-dimensional, but parallel lines can intersect. Our self-evident truth is no longer true, and theorems built on those truths are no longer true. This painting, however, is not built in Euclidean space, nor is it built in spherical space. It uses hyperbolic space. Hyperbolic space is most easily understood by thinking of a horse's saddle. If we take a section of hyperbolic space and draw an equilateral triangle, for example, it would look like this. Notice these angles do not add up to 180 as they do in Euclidean space. Now let's keep drawing triangles in a space like this. These are all ideal triangles with the same side lengths, and what we are doing is called a tessellation and could theoretically continue forever, even within this finite space. Notice the pattern forming, very similar to angels and devils. So let's return to Escher's drawing. We can find this ideal triangle throughout, and he uses the pointy sides to define the devils, while the smooth sides to define his angels. Escher is famous for his use of space, and it is good to remember that he was able to produce this effect using geometry.